Okay, so we are going to talk about an actual simulation now using the uh, safety PLC. So the simulation that I have going here. A uh, couple questions about it. First of all, uh, what kind of safety devices are we using in the simulation? You're going to have to name what those are. And then how many zones do we actually have in this simulation? So zones are basically how many different areas do we break up our machine into that we're controlling separately with different safety devices. So let's have a look at this actual simulation we have going here. So this is a cell. There's two gantries going here, as you can see them moving. So we've got fence all the way around here. So there's some fencing. You can see that. And then these are all working devices here. So we've got three different safety doors. So I can open up a door. And if I close it, I need to reset that door. Got another door right here. Open up that door. And close it. Oh. I put that door right through that wall. Let's try that. And then uh, reset that. You can see I have these gantries that run here. If the safety in that zone is good, the gantry will be running. Uh, the conveyors run all the time. I've also got some e-stops here on these panels. We have an e-stop. If you press that, that's a safety device. I have to pull that back out to reset it. Then push the reset button to get moving again. And then we've also got some light curtains here. So you can see these devices here. This is a light curtain. So I've got one there on the entrance to zone number one here, and another light curtain that is a barrier between zone one and zone two right here. So two light curtains, three e-stops, three safety doors, safety gates, another one on the back side over here. See this door here. Reset that. So that is what we've got for this safety system. And this is actually being run right now by Safety PLC Logic in the Safety PLC. So let's have a look at exactly what is going on here. Jump back over here. So this is kind of what our system looks like. So zone one and zone two, we are calling it. Uh, so zone one in the blue here, that is made up by these fences. Zone two over here. And then I've got a light curtain here, a light curtain here. That's our gantry number one, gantry number two. This gray conveyor that goes all the way through it. And then I've got a safety gate here and an e-stop, safety gate here and an e-stop and safety gate over here and an e-stop. Those are all of our devices. So that's basically how this system is laid out. So let's look at how this actually works. What controls what? What makes things actually stop? So first of all, an e-stop. So there's three e-stop buttons. If you push that, an e-stop is going to kill everything on this system. So e-stop is going to stop the gantry number one, gantry number two, and the conveyor. So let's see how that works. So if I look over here, e-stop button on this box right here, if I push this button, you see everything has come to a complete stop. Completely dead. Okay, so e-stops kill everything. And that is pretty typical for machines. If you press an e-stop button anywhere on a machine, that's going to kill everything in sight. I pull that e-stop back out. The machine doesn't start automatically. I actually need to push this blinking green reset button for things to start back up again. And then off they go. Okay, so that is how e-stops are going to work in our system. E-stops are going to kill everything. Now, I have zone number one defined here. 
Zone number one controls gantry number one. So if zone number one safety is okay, gantry number one is okay to run. This is going to be determined by, is my perimeter around zone number one okay? So that's going to be two different factors. Number one, as you can see, I have written here. Oops. Gate number one has to be closed. If you don't have gate number one closed, you don't have a perimeter around zone number one. So if you open up gate number one, that's going to kill gantry one. It doesn't kill zone number two. Zone number two is still okay. Also, you must have this light curtain right here, light curtain one. That is part of your perimeter, okay? So if you have light curtain number one violated, your perimeter is no good for zone one, that will also stop gantry number one. And now we get into some different options here. The other side of this cell is made up by this light curtain, which we're going to call the zone one, two light curtain. So we could have zone one, two light curtain is okay. Or if that is not okay, our whole perimeter is still all right. As long as the integrity of this whole zone two perimeter is okay. So if this light curtain is broken, but this gate over here on the back side and the gate on the front are okay, then basically we have one big fenced in area and it doesn't really matter what's going on between the two zones. That would still be okay. All right. And this is how we're allowed to have boxes travel between zone one and zone two without interrupting the flow or interrupting safety between the two zones. So let's watch how that works on the simulation. So like we said, if we open up this gate, gantry number one is going to stop. That is breaking the perimeter of zone one. Let's close this gate. Reset. Now we're running again. Let's watch when this box comes along. Light curtain gets broken here. That stops. I'm just going to put this box in the light curtain here. If that box is breaking that light curtain, you can see now zone one is broken because this light curtain makes up part of the perimeter for zone one. Let's look at something else here. Right now, zone one is okay. However, and I can let that break. See how we can have boxes travel between the two and both zones are still okay. However, if I was to take box out here, and it was to break both of these light curtains at the same time. Sorry, that's not a good example. If I open up this gate, and then break this light curtain in between the two zones, you can see that is now breaking the perimeter of zone one because zone two perimeter is no good and the light curtain between the two is also no good. If I take this out of the light curtain, zone one is now okay, it can run again. Or if I close this gate, zone one is okay again. Okay, so that is how that works between the two uh, zones. So that is the safety for zone one. Zone two works very, very similar, just kind of in the other direction. So for zone two to be okay, I need to have both the rear and the front gate closed, and then I need to have this light curtain 
okay between the two. Or, if that light curtain is broken, I need to have the rest of this perimeter around zone 1 okay, because once again that would join the two fences together. So either this light curtain is good, or this light curtain and this gate are good. Either one of those conditions can be okay. So let's watch that. So zone 2, if I break that gate, that gantry will stop. If I break the rear gate, gantry will stop. If I have the light curtain in between broken, it's okay as long as I don't have the gate broken. Because now zone one is no good, so now if I break the light curtain between the two, now both cells are joined together and my entire perimeter is no good. Same with if I break this. I'll stop the conveyor to make this easier. If I break that, and I break that light curtain. I break that curtain and this one at the same time. I do that, both light curtains are broken. This is one big cell altogether that is broken right here. Both of these guys will stop. Clear this, we'll run those both out of there, light curtain's clear, and we're good again. Okay, so that is how the zones work. So what does this all mean for our actual safety system? So we talked in the last video about how we had standard logic that was going to control contactors, motor contactors or motor starters, that actually give power to these individual devices. But then in front of those, we are actually going to have safety contactors that give a physical break of that as well. So we are going to have individual safety contactors. This is what we call a one line diagram showing the power flow. Uh, so we would have standard contactors that we can control out of our regular standard logic here for the conveyors, gantry one, gantry two. And then we are going to need three sets of safety contactors that our safety PLC will need to control. One will be for the conveyor system. So that will break power to just the conveyor system because that works independently of zone one or zone two. That's going to be dependent just on e-stops. Zone one is going to have a bunch of conditions which we kind of spelled out there what those are going to be. So we're going to have two safety contactors that are going to be controlled by that logic that will break power to just the gantry in for zone one or if we had other devices in zone one as well then we're going to have a separate set of contactors in zone two that would work there as well and this is physically how this would be laid out so when we talk about in the logic the actual outputs we're going to control that would be these safety contactors here and that's how that, what we would actually be controlling for that okay so that is a general overview of how this simulation is going to work in the next video we're going to show how to actually program these things. So the very first block we're going to do is the RIN or redundant input block that we're going to use to control each of the input devices. Okay, so that'll be the next video. We'll see you then.